All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you the Epic Frank and YAML program. So um, in the old days of Home Assistant, we had to make these long configuration.yaml files. And uh, we had, you had to individually enter all of your entities and integrations and everything like that in there. Nowadays, everything's pretty much automatically adding. And so it kind of makes this not as important. But um, it still can be useful if you do have a lot of entities that don't add themselves into Home Assistant. Um, and so uh, this program will take your configuration.yaml file. And so let me show you a picture of what a long one looks like. Here we go. So they look a lot like this. And it will parse them into individual objects. And from there, you can delete them. You can disable them. Uh, let me show disable. Um, you can disable them. And then you can actually export it back into a new configuration.yaml file. Um, you can also export them into a very well-sorted group of integrations and entities. So I'm not going to get into too much depth on how to use this. I wrote a whole bunch of little help bubbles uh, along the way on everything that I thought could be an issue. Um, it uh, can be trained basically to um, cut up and sort up and also turn various things into objects um, out of your configuration.yaml file. Um, I put in um, all the integrations that I um, was aware of and that use regularly, that kind of thing. But uh, Home Assistant just had way too many integrations for me to put in there, but the thing can be trained in real time as you're actually using it. And if it doesn't know the answer to a question, like what the heck is this entity? Is it, is it uh, this kind of thing or that kind of thing? Um, you can answer the questions as you're actually using it. Um, not only that, but also it does save a copy, or at least it can save a copy of your configuration.yaml um, in there. And you can uh, uh, make an account and it will save it for you. And then you can just grab YAML from parsed and start right, right back where you left off. And so once you've uh, copied and pasted your configuration.yaml in or you're loading from saved, um, you can uh, see here that on the right here it says there are some missing files. And those are ones that are actually referenced uh, by something in here. There's usually a, that, that uh, exclamation mark include um, thing. So it removes that line and instead it gives you this little notice here um, saying that uh, uh, you should probably add those just so it can remind you to add any files that uh, your original configuration.yaml file uh, references. This will delete all of those references and replace them with its own or replace them with nothing. Because um, once you're done, you can basically hit parse and which makes it directly into objects. Um, you can basically work with your configuration.yaml out of this. And so you can see that I've del uh, disabled this automate, uh, I'm sorry, this um, integration. Uh, oh gosh, I disabled all my automations. What am I gonna do? Oh, I can just click this button. And so I try to make it as easy as possible to manage these things. You can edit the text within them. But one thing you can also do is you can always go back to parse and add new integrations right in there uh, very quickly and then go back into it. Um, in addition to that, if you've already added all the integrations that you want, but you just want to add a new entity, you just find the integration that you want. So in this case, I'm going to add a binary sensor. And let's see here, download, edit, delete, zoom in, create new. Oh, that sounds good. And look, I get this blank parse form. What is that? Here we go. I found a binary sensor. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this binary sensor into here. Now you notice um, the particular indentation, and that's because you can actually add multiple at the same time. And without that indentation, I mean, there's no way um, any self-respecting program could possibly figure out what you're trying to feed it. Um, so you do have to have the appropriate in, in, uh, indentation. Um, so for instance, uh, a binary sensor is a list, and so it requires this, this kind of indent um, with the first line having this little dash thing. Um, first line of every item that is. Um, but for instance, a dictionary file might have something like, um, will be arranged something like this. And so um, that's pretty much how it works. Uh, you basically paste this in, paste as many as you want in. So you could just dump your files one after, after another after another right in here. Hit parse. 
And if there's any errors, it'll actually point them out to you. So in this case, this error is telling me that when it attempted to add it into my, um, uh, my greater array compendium of all the different objects, you, I had a duplicate. Ha! Huh. Imagine a Home Assistant giving you that kind of an error. So I guess I just need to change the name. So some loser, I'm going to change this loser to a winner. Oh, everyone's a winner. There we go. Let's try it again. Oh, and it works. Um, and so once I'm done with this, I can hit confirm parse. Um, and so the reason why it gives me an, a little uh, a warning message here is because I do have some missing things over here. It would give me that even if I didn't, but um, it is, is a reminder because you can easily forget uh, about all the various configuration, uh, I'm sorry, the various uh, YAML files that you might have. And so just good practice to warn you. Um, so uh, I can also edit uh, the specific text of uh, different automations. Um, oh my gosh. I'm sorry, different integrations I can, I can um, add text to. So let me show you actually, I forgot to add my automations file. Gosh, what am I gonna do? So I'm just gonna create new. And I'm actually just copying and pasting all my, my entire automation file directly in there, parse. Oh my gosh, it just ate it right up. Um, and so uh, these are a number of things that um, I pulled from other YouTubers. Um, this one is so great. Um, it's based off of a, a script that, turn, uh, that reminds you to turn your, or rather get your laundry out. Um, but this one, we have an old wall unit and I don't want to replace it and it eats up electricity. And so this basically turns it off after a period of time. So wonderful. Okay, um, so let's see what else we can do here. Oh yes, uh, the export functions. I mean, pretty much the rest of this is, is fairly self-explanatory. So the real fun is the exporting process. So once again, you can if you make a login and password for this, you can save your configuration.yaml, um, a copy of it at least, on um, whatever web server you're, you have it running on. Hopefully your home web server. The way I have it uh, uh, set up is that it, um, when you, See if I can show you um, this gibberish that it creates. <laughs> so the way I have it set up is it encrypts using the uh, one of those open SSL uh, functions within PHP based on your login and password. That also means that you cannot recover your data if you lose your password. Um, but I suppose that's a good thing. That means if um, you run a copy of this on my particular site or whatever, um, that you know you. Won't uh, uh, won't have to worry about it being, um, you know, hacked. So as far as ways to export, um, I actually do recommend, especially since this program is so. Um, oh gosh, I'm tooting my own horn, aren't I? Uh, it's so um, it makes it so easy to actually uh, edit your configuration.yaml file. I do just recommend exporting it in a single file. Um, my Raspberry Pi really had a tough time when I tried to. Uh, uh, use a, uh, a gigantic multitude of files as opposed to just a single one. Uh, so for instance, uh, just like I showed you in the intro to this video, um, it has the ability, in, uh, if you click on uh, separate into files, to create a zip file. Let's see, it'll download shortly. That wasn't shortly enough, I'm too impatient. And it will separate everything out just like Frank did in his video, and that's what inspired this entire project. So to export into a single file, I just click on export single file, and um, I don't have it automatically download, um, I just have it show you this, since that way you can copy and paste it over. What also might be useful is that if you actually disable something, so let me click disable automation here. Um, so. I'm di I disable the entire integration known as automation. So that includes, of course, all of its little sub entities. And so I hope it's pretty obvious that this is disabled. I think the big red disabled flag probably clues you in. But also useful is that when you actually go to export the file, look at that. It actually just comments it out. And that's actually how it knows uh, to pick these things back up. So if you were to say copy and copy this over, uh, I'm just going to start from scratch and paste this back in, you'd be right back where you started. So that's the program pretty much in a nutshell. Um, I hope it's 
pretty self-explanatory. Uh, took me a very long time to code it. Um, I am moving to New Zealand in like two weeks and I will never see my Tasmoto devices again and I probably won't ever see this piece of software again. Um, it's free to use. It's totally open source, of course. It's, of course, written in PHP. Uh, go to GitHub and download it if you're interested. Um, I have uh, another video on uh, a specific uh, extension to this called Tasmoto List, which you might be interested in, but also has installation instructions. But it's pretty simple. You just set up a uh, uh, web server, install PHP on that web server, and then just uh, copy over the files into a web-enabled directory. I do recommend running all these on your local network, um, especially Tesmoto List for cripes, um, but um, uh, you're free to upload them on your own website if you uh, really want to do that. Anyway, hopefully you enjoy this program and have a wonderful day.